everybody, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. Well, Jim, let's start out in the NHL, where we so often do. Where it was a strange week. Let's start out with a couple of huge injuries, Jim. Yeah, well, uh, Tom Rennie uh, missed the game after getting a puck in the head during practice. Uh, let's not forget about Buffalo's Lindy Ruff, who also missed time because he was taken out during practice by accident, of course. Yeah, it but looked by accident. He broke three ribs. Crazy. Both guys <laughs> out. Both guys completely out. It was on the same day. Um, Tom Rennie, though, like he, he just came out and he's like, yeah, I, you know, I now I know what it feels like to have post-concussion syndromes or concussion-like syndrome or, or, yeah, syndrome yeah. or whatever like that. Like, good, like amazing. Hey. Should have been wearing a helmet. Should have been wearing a helmet. Didn't didn't we learn already? Yeah. Didn't we learn? It's uh, crazy that it would happen on the same day, though. Same morning. Oh, totally. And, then, and two assistant coaches get the big call. Uh, does that does that count on their record, that win or loss? I, <clears throat> I wonder. I think so. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And good for uh, the associate coaches, the assistant coaches to get in there, though. You know, get the get the big call up. Just like just like players are coming up from the farm. You know, oh, there's been an that's injury. That's right. And uh, maybe the, even even if they are taking direction in the earpiece. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, Lindy Ruff used to play in the NHL, Jim, but it's been a while since he scored a goal. Speaking of which, I've got two words for you on, uh, you know, been a while since he scored a goal. Scott Gomez. Uh, do you mean Scott Gomez? Yes, I do. <laughs> scored no. the game winner for the first time in over 50 games this week. Much to the, well, I don't know if, if Montreal Canadiens fans would be happy about that or sad about that, because I think they were having a good time with it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, w for example, did Gomez score dot com? They had to update that one. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, it's, it's good because he, he's finally earning that paycheck now, right? $7 million a year goes over 365 days. I think it was 367 days uh, with a goal. And uh, it was a beauty knuckler, too, that, that one. Just oh, yeah. And it, it was pretty pretty similar to his, his last goal also. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But, well, uh, you know, I, I love the no celebration because yeah. it goes in and, you know, he's just thinking, oh, God. <laughs> no, totally. Here we go. I'm going to have oh. to do all these interviews. I'm going to have to do all this. If I was Sam, I'd... <laughs> I'd, I'd get into the scrum and I'd be like, let me guess. <laughs> How does it feel? Let's go, your first goal in a year. <laughs> totally. <laughs> uh, you know who else scored their first goal of the year is Magnus PRV, Jim. Uh, That's true. Beauty, absolute beauty. Uh, guy played a heck of a game. It was nice to see finally. Yeah, no, that was really nice to see because he, you see with him too, it, you know, the puck goes in the net and here's him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking to the heavens, the hockey gods smile yeah. on exactly. Well, that was good, and you know, you know, he's he wanted that goal so bad. He he wound up, I think, as hard as he possibly could <laughs> yeah, from right. the slot there to make sure it crossed the line. Exactly, he's like shoot for the center of that, shoot, shoot for the center of the net. Don't <laughs> miss, Magnus. Don't miss. <laughs> uh, some good good news for you here, Jim, as a uh, as a Detroit Red Wing fanatic. The Winter Classic is going to be officially is officially now at Michigan Stadium between the Leafs and the Red Wings. Uh, did you hear how many tickets are going to make available for this one? All right, Winter Classic record, I believe, is just over 71,000 right. or so. They're making 115,000 available for this game. That's insanity. It's absolutely and, insanity. And uh, makes me think it might be not easy to get a ticket, but easier. Well, you know, if you're, your Michigan's not too far away, Jim, if you wanted to get down there for, you know, uh, a, a game or so, you know, you can... I'll you can start walking out. today. <laughs> exactly. Um, they can pack it in there, though, you know, for the Michigan State uh, yeah. outdoor games. They've packed... Uh, uh, well, that'll lot, be cool. Lots and lots of people there, so it's going to be a really amazing thing. Uh, 115,000 people. You know, how <laughs> the puck is this big, you know, how are you yeah. supposed to see the puck? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, we love basketball here at uh, 15 Minutes of Fame. I mean, what a story out of the NBA this week, and I really do mean just this week, because Jeremy Lin has pretty much come out of nowhere to take the league by storm. Jim, what do you think about this kid and his story? Oh, you got to love these stories, but it's it's amazing that a guy can come out of nowhere in in the age of you know instant information and all that that we're that we're in these days. But in, in five games as a starting point guard, the Knicks are five and zero. Oh. Yeah. And he's averaging over 25 points, flirting with a double-double every night. Put up 38 against the Lakers. Absolutely. Kobe and the Lakers. Yeah. It's, 
it's awesome. It's it, definitely the, the kind of feel-good story at the moment. And, of course, drawing comparisons to Tim Tebow and that. But, it's uh, you know, the, the, the Knicks have been without two of their top players in this stretch. So I don't know if they're expecting to be going 5-0. and But that, that performance against the Lakers really cemented what this kid's all about. And, you know, it, this, the, great, the greatness of the story continues when you hear that this was the week where they had to decide whether to guarantee the rest of his season uh, or, or cut him or whatever. And he just, you know, playing like a man possessed, sleeping on the couch of his teammates and stuff because <laughs> he refused to buy a place until he knew he was going to be there. I, like, honest to God, I can see a movie coming next yes, summer. Yes, absolutely. This is limbtastic, if you will. And, uh, and uh, I think it's an absolutely great story. And uh, I was watching some highlights here earlier today. And uh, just, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, he just playing with extreme confidence. The confidence yep. that, uh, coming out of him is amazing. And he, he's trying things that, you know, you just think a guy out of nowhere – wouldn't want to try you know and uh, oh yeah absolutely looks great so good for him he's he's taking guys on oh yeah crossing totally. them up oh absolutely love it um how about the nba taking a page out of the nhl's book when it comes to their all-star weekend they'll be doing a fantasy draft for their rising stars challenge except for the people who are going to be picking are some former nba players charles barkley and shaquille o'neal what do you think about that hey anytime another league is taking pages out of the nhl's book how about that you, you gotta think they're doing something right okay. i mean the nhl yeah it's it's in the top four or five or whatever but you know you i don't think it necessarily gets the respect among among its peers that's right uh, especially in terms of that stuff so for that to happen that's awesome absolutely and fantastic. you know i makes you wonder what else there you know maybe maybe there's some other uh, some other little tweaks they might take out but you got to think that 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 sort of shows that the NHL is on the right path, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Some, some of the, you know, the, the fun stuff on the side. Because obviously they're not going to take it, you know, the NHL is not going to take stuff out of the NBA, like, uh, you know, putting a three-point line in or anything. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it shows that on, on the, uh, you know, the promotional side, and let's face it, it's all about promotion. It really is. Um, especially for the NHL in the United States, where they're really trying to get these other markets. Uh it, it's it's important to see, I guess, that the NBA sees that and goes, "That's a good idea. We're gonna we're gonna steal it." Absolutely. Uh, but you know, it's it's kind of cool. I know like that the, that maybe I'm the NBA All Star Game should be fun. Oh, totally. There, it It'll probably just like every fun. other NBA game. Yeah, but. well, that's true too. I like the fact that uh, Barkley and Shaq are picking. I mean, those guys are funny, funny, funny guys, and so yeah. um, you know, you know, whoever the last person being picked, there's gonna be lots of fun. Uh, well, surrounded around that, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be controversy. I don't think like in the NHL, um, like the mainstream media controversy. But I think it's just gonna be funny, and, and most of those guys can take a joke, so I like it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's even more funny when they can take a joke, though. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. That, <laughs> you're right. That's funny for us and and, and for the show. <laughs> Well, while we're here, let's just talk about one more thing. One of our favorite stories here on 15 Minutes of Fame. Looks like the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight is officially off again. Uh, Mayweather is fighting Miguel Cotto on May 5th. Pacquiao is fighting Timothy Bradley in June. Uh, how much longer before no one, and specifically us, don't care anymore, Jim? I think, for me, I'm pretty much done. That's it, eh? You know, if, if these guys finally fight... And they're both like sixty. Yeah. No one, no, no one's gonna care. You know whether it's drug testing. Okay, I'll agree to it. Oh, but now this. Okay. Oh, but now that. Now I don't want to accept a fifty-fifty split. Okay. Well, you're stupid. Totally. You know it. That it, it, this is just this is way out of hand. Hey, I've booked a date and a venue, so come fight me. No. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll fight somebody else then. Okay. I think you give this maybe another year, maybe another, I get two years at the most. Yeah. But these two are missing out on a huge payday and perhaps, you know, a, a further spot in boxing history just by doing this. You know, this could be the, this could be on par with some of the biggest, you know, matchups in the history of boxing. You and think yet. like Ali Frazier, right? Yeah. People are still talking about that decades later. Pacquiao Mayweather, we're never even going to get to see it, and it's a shame. It is, absolutely. 
Uh, we're going to move on to Gabby's now. These are good and bad by you. We take the best and the worst in the world of sport, and uh, we usually make a little bit of fun of it. Uh, let's kick off the Gabby's with a good to a couple of ballers. Paul Pierce passed Larry Bird on the Boston Celtics all-time scoring list. And Kobe Bryant passed Shaq on the NBA's all-time sc scoring list. Now he sits in fifth, which is uh, absolutely huge. Uh, Shaq also coming out on Twitter and congratulating Kobe. Said they were the, one of the best one-two punches in the league, uh, which was nice to see. And, uh, yeah, good for both of those guys. Yeah, it's funny. You know, the, there was a, a story last year, I think, that that sort of made it seem like the whole Shaq-Kobe thing was just a, a joke and it didn't, you know, the whole feud never happened. And there was something recently that said Phil Jackson was the guy behind the whole uh, thing. Yeah. So yeah, I guess we'll probably never know what, yeah. what the deal was there. But Absolutely. yeah, it's good for Kobe Bryant. He's, I, I believe he's leading the NBA in scoring this year, which is great. The Lakers are struggling a bit, but who knows what will happen. Short season, anything can happen. Exactly. Uh, while we're talking milestones, how about a good to a couple of Red Wings, Jeff? Absolutely. Thomas Holmstrom became just the sixth guy to play in 1,000 games with the Wings. Nick Lidstrom played in his 1,549th game on Friday. That moves him into second on the team's all-time list. When asked how he felt uh, about playing 1,000 games, Thomas Holmstrom said he feels like he's played 1,500. Uh, <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, how, it's amazing that you have to pay, play over, getting back to Lidstrom for a second, play over 1,500 games just to be the second on that list. Yeah. That is absolutely crazy. The Detroit Red Wings have such a storied history. Oh, my goodness, I know. Well, when you have guys who, who uh, change teams maybe you know six or seven times, you look at really good players like Danny Healy who's been on four or five different teams. Like, uh, you know, for someone to even play on, on uh, one team that for 1,500 games, much less 200, that's absolutely fantastic. So Yeah, there's not, there's not many. I think maybe Shane Doan is one of yeah, the few at the that's moment. that's right. Absolutely. That may, that may end his career with this, you know. The same, same sort team. of team. But, yeah. Trade, yeah, the same kind of. Yeah. But trade deadline's coming up. Absolutely. Uh, let's give a good to the BCHL's Penticton Vs. North America's top-ranked Junior A team set a league record on Friday night with their 31st straight win. The Vs haven't lost since November 6th of last year, Jim. Amazing. 31 wins in a row. Uh, sounds oh, like uh, the Detroit Red Wings from 1998-99. Kind of like there, yeah. There you that's go. pretty good. Yeah, that's absolutely. pretty good. Sounds like me on NHL 12 on rookie. <laughs> that's or right. I quit if I'm losing. <laughs> what? Don't want to break that record, man. <laughs> Let's give a bad this week to Tom Brady's wife, Giselle Let's... Bunchen. Yes. For, say for saying my husband cannot bleeping throw the ball and catch the ball at the uh, uh, at the same time as uh, New England Super Bowl loss to the New York Giants. It should really be a good though because one it's true and two we were all thinking it so absolutely yes, is true good for you giselle bunchin yes absolutely i mean uh, you should never have someone from the outside you know being that like, apparently the the locker room is really close uh, with the patriots and and uh, you know it, a loss for the team doesn't come down to one person or two people it comes down to the whole team but it's absolutely true catch the darn ball oh my god yeah uh, let's give a bat to Minnesota Timberwolves forward Kevin Love. Even though he is an absolute beauty, he was suspended for two games this week for stepping on a guy's face last weekend. Uh, Louis Scola fell to the ground in the third quarter, which is when Love gave him the old size 19s in the mouth. Can't we all just get along, Jim? Stop this white on white crime, exactly. you know? It's just. It... Horrible. Come on! Horrible. Kevin Love's a beauty, though, for sure. Absolutely. Scola probably had it coming. Uh, this one is short and sweet. Back to the New England Patriots. A bad for releasing Tuquan Underwood the night before the Super Bowl, then re-signing him on Tuesday. I understand it's probably all, you know, legit and everything, and it probably happens all the time. But wow. <laughs> I, I, for me, I'd be crushed. Oh, that, that's totally. a terrible... That's, I suppose... He can fun, you know. He can just make himself happy by looking at his paycheck. But still, I guess. But what's Underwood doing? Resigning? Like, there's got to be a little bitterness there. I mean, kind of the day before the Super Bowl. I don't know, man. Um, the punchline this week, Jim, is Brazilian soccer player Adriano, who apparently can't be trusted. Yeah, Jeff. His team is uh, having a tough time getting him back into shape after an Achilles injury. I think he's been out for a while. Yeah. 
And uh, so what they did was they, they took the unusual step of locking him in a hotel room at the team's, I guess the team has a hotel. Yeah. Uh, so they've locked him in there and they're feeding him a strict diet and making him practice three times a day because he can't be trusted to take care of himself, I guess. <laughs> That's a, I mean, I understand you're protecting your investment, but damn. But damn. Exactly. I understand completely. You are staying with us now. Yes. Come. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. Eat this. Go run. Exactly. Uh, let's do a quick hit here, Jim. How much do you like Hockey Day in Canada? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I find yeah. it hard to be awake for the first part of it. <laughs> Oh, this game was great from the second period on, from what I gather. <laughs> so I, yeah, so I hear. <laughs> uh, I, I guess it's good. You know, I'm not really from a small town or anything, so. Ah, yes. You know, <laughs> uh, I'd rather watch hockey than stories about hockey, but. <laughs> Fair enough. I love the celebration of the game. It's good. Oh, uh, you're right. And, uh, it's good, but it drags on a bit. It absolutely does. I guess. Uh, you have to I, turn the TV off and there's like news on yeah. and you can't find the remote. Oh, man. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, folks, well, that's on that note. That's our 15 Minutes of Fame up for this week. Join us again next week when we get a whole new 15 Minutes of Fame. In the meantime, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. Have a good week, folks.